the Joe Rogan experience. I don't know if I just told you the story, but um, well, actually, like my my wife was lost one time. That's actually, um, and uh, I actually didn't think that I was going to find her alive. So that that was actually probably one of the worst outdoor experiences that, that ended up turning out good, saved your life. But um, it was wasn't that for my own sake. How you met her? Others. No, it wasn't how I met her. So um, you'd already met her and then? Yeah, I'd met her. We dated. Um, like, she was a little, she's younger than me. And uh, like, I'm traveling. She had moved uh, away. And then we just kind of like went apart. And we were going to get back together. Uh, this was like a couple years after, so we were, we were no, we were not actually dating at the time. Um, but I, I was on a trip in Alaska. I just got back and then her sister called me and was like, Danielle's missing. And we, uh, and, and it's like, you know, one of those, like nobody can find her and like, maybe I have the skill set to go help out in some way. And so I like literally, I just I, ha- I was unpacking all this. I was doing a film thing in Alaska. I just got in, maybe five minutes into my house. I just left all my shit. I called my brother and my friend and was like, "Danielle's missing. We're gonna go." So we we gathered up our stuff and uh, drove. She was in Central Nevada. She was visiting her dad and like just um, gone out on a trail and never came back. And so it was like it was it's like the high desert, maybe mid midsummer so it's you know like you pretty hot in the daytime really cold at night really high elevation kind of thing and uh, i think she'd been missing for this would be going on her third day oh shit yeah and um so i was like oh shit and there was a so we got there and there had been like a facebook group and they 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 had the black hawk helicopters out looking couldn't find her search and rescue they did the dog thing everything and uh so I got there, it was like probably 5 p.m., it's still daylight when I got there. And uh, we, get, we get there and um, kind of talk to search and rescue. And, and I'm like, they're, one of the guys kind of recognized me, knew I was and what I did. And I, I had my whole pack, like I was ready to glass. Like we were going to just, normally on search and rescue things, like they want people out of the area, but they knew that I knew what I was doing. So they let us in to help. And um, so kind of met with them, talked to them. There was a Facebook group thing of like what they'd seen. And there was this report of a vehicle with like Mexico plates leaving the area. And and I don't know like why, how, you know, she start like people start saying like, okay, I saw her last wearing this. So she, the last she'd been seen, she was just wearing like running stuff. Uh, Didn't have any equipment with her. She'd gone up and then the search and rescue dogs, like they went up the canyon and then they came back and they did that multiple times. So the theory was like she went up, came back and then people were, they were actually had kind of thought since they put in a search effort that she was gone, like taken. So, you know, that, that kind of shits in your mind too. Right. Right. So you're like, okay. Cause they, they saw a Mexico plate. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know why, you know, why that would, but. Kidnapping. Yeah. Something. Right. Right. Because they had the. You know, they, they were working under the assumption that she wasn't there, like, out there. Right. So, you know, they kind of asked, like, they, they do, like, a little interview, like, you know, how far do you think she'd go? And I was like, well, she trains for marathons. Like, she could be 20 miles from this point. We don't really know, you know. Um, we don't know what happened either. Like, she could have fallen, broke. Like, we just don't know what happened. Yeah. Um, so they showed us where the, the dogs were, had gone, and where they had inspected and everything. And I... I thought, I was like, you know, my initial, like the way that I think was like, well, whatever you guys have done didn't work, right? So I'm just going to kind of take the things that you've said and just, and look at it through a a lens of like, that didn't work. So I got, we've got to just try something different. So I loaded up my pack and I had like all my optics, everything. And I was just like, I, my thought was, I'm just going to go out there. And, and part of it too, I was kind of like a wreck in some ways where I'm like, I'm not just going to sit around and do nothing. Right. So it's starting to get dark at this point. And my thought was like, I'm not coming back until I find something. So I just load up my pack. Like I'm going on a backcountry hunt with all my shit and just go after, go back there and see what I can do. And I wanted to be, it was, it was good in nighttime. So I wanted to be like ready first thing in the morning thinking when that, before that light gets harsh and she's in the shade. Like if you're trying to survive in the desert when it's it's super cold at night, so you're probably moving around to stay warm, and then it, in the morning, you'd probably still be moving around. But once it gets daytime, then you're probably in the heat. 
and you're in the shade. So uh, there was the guy. So they had Blackhawk, and it had to go back because it had timed out. Like it needed fuel there there at that point, and it, they were searching in the middle of the day, which I thought. You know, it'd be better to search in the evening after the, the heat on the rocks cools off a little bit and you can use a FLIR system like thermals mm-hmm. um, because everything in the desert cools down so fast that you might be able to find her at night using a thermal system. So I asked the guy if we could get a thermal FLIR system and so they were working on getting something. And so I had one of the guys take me into the um, back. And I just said, like, drive me as far. They had, like, these little ranger things in the whole, or, uh, you know, like an off-road vehicle, like uh, – what Polaris yeah yeah or Can-Am or whatever so uh, I was like just drive me as far back as you can and so drive me back and now it's starting to get dark and I had a big flashlight and I just like looked at it before it got dark and just looking around I was like oh I'd probably go up here no trail I was like man we've we've hiked all over the world together no trails we never go on trails so I just thought i will start going here and now but at this point it's dark and I just started hiking in the dark up this canyon and it's probably uh, maybe probably close to midnight at this point. And I was thinking about, you know, like a lot of shit's going through my head, thinking, man, what's it going to be like if I find her dead? And, okay, like am I prepared for this? Or what if I – and the thing that really like messed me up was what if I never find her? Like I just couldn't – and these things like kept going through my head. And I'm literally in the dark, hiking, and there's no moon at all. Just hiking in the dark, I like just stopped, and you just I like felt very, very, very helpless, and I'm like literally praying for a sign of some kind, and I look down and there's this weird scuff mark, and I'm like, I just keyed in on it, in randomly walking in the dark, and there's deer tracks everywhere, and I just start like following this one track, and it just didn't look right, but it's not like the kind of ground where you can see tracks. You mm-hmm. know, I inspected it. I, I didn't see shoes, and I, I get up to this like flat bench area, and I just have this weird feeling, and I'm like, yeah. And then I saw a light on the top of the mountain, so I thought, oh man, maybe that's somebody had come in, hiked in with a, like uh, thermals, and I can use that to then look for her, and I'll come back to this area. So I, um, I call my brother and my buddy on the radio. I'm like, hey, I, you know, I'm up here. And they were around. They were looking around the rocks where the dogs had turned around thinking maybe she went up there, fell into something and got stuck. And like places people, normal search and rescue wasn't going to look. So they were looking in kind of those areas. So I hike up to where the light was on the hill. And it happened to just be like people that were in the area, like a couple that were just like whatever camping. And. It, you know, I was like, hey, you know, I talked to him. I was like, hey, here's a picture. Have you seen this person? No, we haven't seen anything. I was like, cool. You know, like the area's kind of closed down right now, just so you know, because they're looking for, her. like, cool, we'll keep an eye out. And so uh, n- now I'm away from that spot. I just, like, I started to think about it, and I was like, I called my brother and buddy, and they're like, yeah, you know, we don't we don't see anything around here. Like, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll start first thing in the morning. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to stay up here, and I'm going to go back to this spot. I'm just going to camp out up here or whatever. Um, but I got to go check this spot first. So I walk back to that like little bench thing and I sit down, I turn off my light and I just yell out. I'm like, Hey, Danielle, this is Remy. If you can hear me, I'm not leaving till I find you. And I'm just like sitting there and then I hear Remy. And I was like, Oh shit. And it was so faint. I was thinking to myself, did I just like, did I actually hear that? So I had my radio and I called my brother and a uh, friend and I was I said, "Hey, I just heard her. I'm going to turn my radio off in case that maybe that's like I'm only going to hear her one more time. I'm turn my radio off, get somebody up here." So, uh, and I just said that over the radio because I didn't want the radio going off for some random reason right. while the next time she said something or right. whatever. So I flipped the radio off and I just started like moving in that direction where I I heard something and I yelled out again and didn't hear anything and then kept moving and, and yelled out again. And when I, before it got dark, I remember it like, it was this big basin, almost like a amphitheater kind of shape. Right. And on the top side was all these cliffs and everything. So I thought, well, maybe I heard it across the Canyon and she fell into one of those cliffs. So I'm like moving in that direction, but I'm trying to move like, you know, when you're chasing an elk and it's like that, you've got to, you've got to run, but you can't run loud. Right. And you're like that stalking running, like trying yeah. to be quiet. Cause it was very, very faint. And still I'm partially thinking I'm going crazy. 
And uh, so I um, I get up to that. Uh, I, I keep going and I, and I yell. I'm like, Danielle, can you hear me? And then I hear Remy or I, or I heard her. Uh, yeah, I, she actually said my name again. I was like and I flipped on my light and she was like 300 yards below me. I was like, oh, shit. So I, I run to her thinking like, oh, look, this is crazy. So I run up to her and she just is like so confused. And she, she was like, I, I think she thought she was like hallucinating. And I was like, are, are you okay? She's like, I don't know. And I was like, um, I was like, do you, do you know who I am? She's like, I, th- I think so. So do you, do you know your, like, just, you know, like basic first responder questions. Right, like, can right. you answer some simple questions? Like, do you know your name? Like, no. She didn't know her name. Like, yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. And I'm like, okay. And then, so I called the, um, I, I flipped my thing on. I called my buddy and I was like, all right, I found, like, I've got her. We need like paramedics here now. And uh, so my buddy was, they were probably two or three miles from the base camp. My buddy Joe just like takes off, just like sprinting down to the base camp. And then my brother is hiking up to me to help her. And so um, we tried to, I, we didn't have service where we were. And I had lost, I was I have a satellite messenger, but I left it in the truck. Um, so my buddy goes down and I think somehow somebody had called whoever, you know, paramedics and the whole deal. And so my buddy Joe, this is the funny part, is my buddy Joe runs down to the search and rescue camp. And he's like, Remy found her. We need to go. And one of the guys that was kind of in charge is like an older guy. He not a guy that goes in the field or anything. Just he's like, you know, somebody thought they heard something, but it could have been a mountain lion. So we're just going to save our energy for the morning search. <laughs> and my buddy Joe's like, He's like, fuck you, I'm commandeering your vehicle. And he just takes the Ranger, the Razor thing, wow. and just rips off toward town. Because, you know, it was like, to go meet, get get some What help. a cunt. Yeah, like, I mean, like, who's ever heard, like, we thought we heard something, but it could have been a mountain lion? Like, that doesn't even make and any you're sense. you're saying you have her. Right. Yeah, he's like, he's just like, he, you know, I mean. He, That's like, like a I, scene in a movie yeah, where there's this one lazy cop. Yeah, exactly. It was just like I was like, "This is this is oh. too crazy." <laughs> like when he told me that story, I couldn't. I was just like rolling, laughing, and also concerned. Like, why the fuck would you say it could have been a mountain lion? What a dick. So, so uh, they go up, and we end up. He he gets meets up with them, and and they get up to the top. Uh, they were able to like kind of get up this ridge, and then came down with a a, a stretcher. And my brother and I were able to, like, you know, do, like, a help her get up the mountain. Did you give her water? Did she? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I gave her water. Um, thinking, I'm like, here, drink this. And, like, she, like, as soon as it hit her lips, she, like, spit it out. She's like, fire. Like. So she was so dehydrated. So dehydrated. that Like, it just started, like, burning. Like, the water was burning. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so. Um, we got her, we got her up to the paramedics and then you, obviously to the hospital and like a pretty extensive rehydration, uh, thing. And yeah. And you know, like she, she wasn't feeling good when she went out and I think it was just like, oh, I'm going to go you, you, when you're sick or whatever. You're just like not feeling good. You go out to do something that, to feel better, probably went beyond capabilities, I think, and woke up and didn't know where she was. So she went out kind of sick and thought she was going to sweat it out? Yeah. Wow. Just went on a run. Yeah. And then probably, and then, you know, and then just had no clue, uh, had no clue like where she, I think the good thing is when she didn't know where she was, she didn't go anywhere else. She stayed put, which is definitely, yeah, because you, you just, like have no clue where you are. You don't like don't know where to start going. They would have never found her if no, it wasn't for you. I don't think so. Wow. I don't know. Dude, she owes you. Yeah. Well, now we're <laughs> married. <laughs> so I got her back. I was like, it, it's a it's a solid way to win an argument. You know, like, I think we should. I definitely think we should go here for dinner. She's like, nah, I'm not really feeling that. But remember that time I saved your life. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Talk about a, a bond. Like yeah. You guys have a bond forever. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's a pretty, I don't know. That's a crazy, crazy bond. That's a crazy bond. Yeah. The fact that you found her. 